If it's easy. <laughs> so dilution problems, what these are, it's sort of like related rates, except uh, you have, in these problems, we'll have uh, two different containers of liquid, and there'll be some rate of transfer uh, from one to the other and back again. And there'll be different concentrations in each, uh, in each liquid. And we'll see, we're going to try to find, we want a, an equation that models the amount over time, basically. So how the amount changes over time. We want to figure that out. So we'll start out with writing down some information here. Well, do it for our goal. That's not what I want. There we go. So I'll tell you what I really want, A of T function. time, which we'll use t. And the units of time should be obvious from the units that are in the problem. So we have two containers. some chemical, liquid chemical. And we'll draw a picture of two containers. Don't have to get fancy. They can be rectangles. And we'll call this one container one, and the other one will be container two. And the volume, container one is 500 gallons, 5,000 gallons. And two is 4,700. And there's going to be a amount of, and you can think of amount as basically it's the concentration, it's some amount. We measure it. <coughs> I have the picture in my notes. I'm trying to reconstruct what the problem said. So there is flow going both directions, and it's happening at 100 gallons per minute. So we use a smaller pen. So we got 100 gallons per minute. And the other way is 100 gallons per minute. Now in Calc 1, we had problems that were sort of like this, except there was no second tank. And it was just how does the volume change in the first tank, basically. So that was our Calc 1 problem. These two numbers didn't match up. And it was how much, uh, what was happening with the volume. So that was a Calc 1 problem. Uh, now we're assuming that the volume is constant. It's just uh, we're going to be mixing uh, chemicals from one container to the other. So we'll go with A1 is the amount A1. amount in container one. A2 amount in container two. And we get some initial conditions. A1 of 0 equals 0, and A2 of 0 equals 300. So it says initially, all the chemicals are in 
all the, the amount of the chemical that we're looking at is all in tank number two. And tank number one contains none of that chemical. So you can think if it's a salt, and we're talking about salt inside water, then at the very beginning, container one's fresh water, container two is salt water. And so at some point, we're going to get some salt going into one. So the concentration is going to, the amount is going to rise in container one, and it's going to fall in container two over time. So that's what's going to happen, at least in the beginning. And at some point, if you let it go long enough, they will have almost the same concentration, and everybody will be happy. But what we're going to do is write a, is find a function that represents the amount in either container one or container two. And the total amount won't change. So if you find an equation for one, you can just, uh, the two of them added together need to be 300 at any given time. So we can write that property down. So we're write some properties. So no matter what, we're not going to add any more salt into the system. So this, this is a closed system. So A1 plus A2 is always 300. So that's one of the properties. And if we want to solve for one of them, A1 of T is 300 minus A2 of T. What time units are we using? Not seconds. Minutes. minutes. Why are we using minutes? I could convert if I want to go to seconds, but then I have to multiply each of the or divide each of these by 60 if I want to go to seconds. So reasonable to do if you wanted to, but we're going to stick to the gallons and minutes the way that it's already in there. So now we need to figure out how is the amount changing. This is the differential equations part, the tricky part. So let's think about how is the amount changing. And let's think about this in terms of the first uh, amount. So intuitively, it's going to gain some salty water, and it's going to lose, at least at the beginning, some fresh water. Now the question is, how much is it gaining? How much is it losing? So how is A1 changing? What variable, or what do I have to do to A1 to describe how it changes? Take the derivative. Take the derivative. So A1 prime is how it changes. So the answer is A1 prime, but of course we need to write down what exactly is A1 prime. So we take the derivative. And of course, we're doing a t derivative in this case. So when I write a1 prime, this is d d t of a1. So how is it changing? It's going to gain some amount of salt, and it's going to lose some amount of salt. So let's do in minus out. Is going to gain some salt and lose some salt. Now, only at the very, very beginning is it going to not lose any salt because it has no salt to lose. But even one second in, it's going to, well, I'm not very good at physics. It may take a couple seconds for something to propagate and mix together. But uh, very soon after you start, you're going to start losing some salt because there will be enough salt that is mixed in that you'll lose a little bit of salt. And after a long enough time, you'll be losing quite a bit of salt when things are evened out. So in essence, we're at a Gatorade factory mixing electrolytes in. Sure. Yeah, if you want to think Gatorade or if you're into Breaking Bad, <laughs> whatever, whatever you're making, man. <laughs> I don't know why I'm you're mixing salt. Whatever you're making in your RV. <laughs> I cannot confirm what <laughs> All right, so how in the world do I figure out how much is coming in? So I got a rate coming in. So I get 100 gallons per minute. Multiplied by 
what is actually coming in? Same. The whatever liquid is in container two. That's what's coming in. This is going to be in. So we're going to do in first and then out second. So we'll go in minus out. So we're still working on the in. All right, so how much of that? I can almost just do this, A2, except it's not 100 times A2. So what we're going to do is take A2 is 4,700 gallons. So I'm going to get uh, the amount divided by the amount of salt divided by the total right here. So that's the, I think they call it the concentration or something. So in chemistry, that's the percentage of salt, basically. So that's the in amount. How much are we losing? Now we're losing 100 gallons per minute also. And what are we losing? We're losing some of our own uh, salt out of container one. So we're losing A1, but it is A1 over its volume, which is 5,000. So this is DA1 over DT. So unfortunately, we have a differential equation in A1, A2, and T. So we have a differential equation in three variables. In this class, we've only solved them in two variables. Generally, it's been x and y, or some variable in T. Sometimes we've used some u's when we couldn't do it without using u's. So I need to somehow, we're not going to be able to get rid of T. That's going to be a time problem no matter what. That's got to be one of the parameters. So we need to get rid of A1 or A2. Now. I see A1 here twice, so let's get A2 out. How do I somehow get rid of A2? Yeah, somewhere around here. Right there. So I don't know A1 and A2, but I, if I knew one, I would know the other. So I can take out, I guess solve for A2, but take out A2 and put in some 300 minus A1. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to use that right there. So we have add A2. A2 equals 300 minus A1. So I don't know anything about A1 and A2 other than how they're related. And that's all that we're using to do this. So we have 100 over 4,700 is 1 47th. A2 is 300 minus A1 minus 1 50th A1. Well, that's getting pretty close to the form that we can solve. We got some DAs and DTs. And we'll clean it up a little bit. Just do some algebra. All these denominators are not very fun. ones that is. I'm not going to attempt to go common denominator. It doesn't seem very fun. Um, question about the 
negative five. Oh, that should be a plus. Wait. Yeah. Is that right? <coughs> we had minus. Yeah. What type of equation do we have? <coughs> Let's let alpha equal this really ugly number. And then we'll unsubstitute at the end. And we'll let beta. So remember, alpha and beta are constants. So I don't need to worry about those changing. Is that separable? I want to say separable, but is it? Multiply by dt, divide that stuff back. Yeah, I think we can do it separably. A1 equals dt, and we're going to divide by everything on the right side. And let's write it as, yeah, I'll write it as minus a1 alpha plus beta. All right, right sides, easy integral. Just get t. We need a plus c somewhere. I generally like to write it on the right side when possible. How in the world do I integrate this thing? It looks horrible. U sub, U -sub sounds good. So let's write it as negative alpha a1. So remember, a1 is our variable. So du is going to be negative alpha da1. Am I using too many letters? I'm just trying to avoid writing out big numbers that are ugly. And we'll just go unsubstitute everything at the very end. The only thing that's tricky is we're taking a derivative with respect on the right side to a1, not with respect to alpha or beta. I see some unhappy customers. Good enough. What if what if I just let a one equal x? That'll make everybody happy. How about that? Now normally this is a worthless u substitution, except I think it will make you happy. Oh, it was a good good pun, unintentional. Those are the best. All right, let's make this up first, and then we'll drop x's down here. So make this so we got integral one over uh, negative alpha x plus beta dx. Is that better? Oh yeah. All right. We lost a subscript and picked up a familiar letter. So normally it's worthless, but in this case, it makes it feel a lot more like calc two. All right. So make our u sub, and we have integral one over u. We get that negative alpha needs to go to the other side. So we're going to take our dx out for negative 1 over alpha du. That 1 over alpha is a constant. Ln u equals t plus c. So we get an unsubstitute, which is negative alpha x plus b. And we're going to unsubstitute a lot of times. That's the price we paid. All right, so we're back to x's. Now we'll go back to a's. And might as well s take out alpha while we're at it. 1 over alpha is 47. Uh-oh, was it? Oh, I didn't slide the screen over. I was just looking at that. Thinking everything was okay. Yeah, 147th plus 150th. Whew. You can't just reciprocate that fraction in the denominator. You have to go common denominator, add it together, and then you can reciprocate if you, one was so inclined. I'm not inclined.
Maybe, yeah, you have to multiply those two together. All right, negative alpha. X was a one. Beta wasn't that bad. 300 over 47. I could solve for a1 if I wanted to, just to divide by that coefficient, that constant, and then take ln inverse, and then do a tiny bit more algebra. So I'd be able to get to a1 if I wanted to. Do you have a number for that? Yeah, sure. I get 97 over 2, 3, 5. Is that right? Wait, 97? Oh, is that reduced? Is that why? Yeah. Okay. Probably better is leave alpha in there. So we could so solve for alpha one or for a one. A two. You could do the whole thing over, or you could just go and write using this. A two is three hundred minus which got for a one. So I would find a two that way. Once you get a one. 300 minus that is A2. All right. So that's our first word problem. So the answer is uh, I didn't really ask a question, so I didn't, there's really nothing to answer. Uh, find. And container one. So find the amount in container one, and A2 would just be 300 minus that number, or not, not that, that, minus that function. So the next one I've written out in words, so that's good. We'll start out with a regular problem that, that has a question mark at the end. Good. So this is another example from the same 15, chapter 15, or section 15, but for some reason they label it 15C. I'm not sure why. change of temperature of a body immersed in a medium remains constant. Oh, the meat in a medium whose temperature remains constant. So we'll call this Tm is proportional to their difference. Now, because English can be sometimes be difficult language to parse out, so this sentence does have a subject. What is the subject, or maybe easier, what is the verb in the sentence? I know this is English 101. No. 
It remains as a verb, and that's not the verb of this sentence. Is. Is. Everything before that is basically the subject, or whatever they call the stuff that modifies the subject. So everything before the word is, is basically the subject or describing the subject. All right, so what really is a subject? It's really the rate of change. A rate of change of what? We keep reading. Of the temperature of a body. Uh, now this body is immersed in a, some area whose temperature is constant. So you can think of your freezer or your refrigerator is probably constant temperature. If you have a really nice heating system, your house probably is vaguely constant. Varies a little bit. Uh, the temperature outside is hardly ever constant because it's always warming up or cooling down depending on what time of the day it is, generally. So that's not a very good constant temperature. Space is constant temperature, I think. Is it? Technically not. Space. Oh. No, it's nothing. It's a vacuum. Well, it it's I think immersed in a vacuum. I, think I, mean, I know the definition of medium. Yeah. It's between hot and medium. high and low on my stove. <laughs> I don't even know what medium is. Well, not temperature, is it? I know what proportional is, and is is an equal sign, so I'm good on some of these words. <laughs> so medium is like a, a substance to the Yeah. yeah. Is it a liquid or a gas? I don't know. Okay, so it transfers whatever properties or whatever. Space. All right, so rate of change. So let's. So we need a con. Uh, we need a problem here. Actually, let's write out this first. So let's give some variable names. Rate of change of temperature of a body. So let's let T be equal temperature of the body. Now, when they use the word body in Physics, they just talk about it's just something that has mass. I don't know what body is. They probably just say it's a thing. <laughs> Keep it real general. <laughs> it's a thingamajig. <laughs> All right. Temp of a body. All right, so how do I describe the rate of change of the, temp of the temperature of the body? Take a derivative. So that is d dt. Unfortunately, we're going to mix t's here. I'm going to use capital T's for temps and little t for the time. Do they do that in science? Excellent. All right. So now we're going to convert this sentence into math into a math sentence. So I'm going to double underline is, because that's the equal sign. So the first half of the sentence reads, the rate of change is. So that's rate of change is. So we're going to translate a sentence to math. All right, is. That's equals proportional. That means multiplied by some constant. And k is chosen for some reason here. Oh, there we go. Now, there is a negative sign in front of it. Only, um, I don't know why somebody made that choice. Um, this is not, I'm not implying that k is negative. k could be positive or negative right here. All right, their difference. So there is referring to the temperatures, and the difference is referring to minus. So does it matter which one you put first? No, it doesn't. Because if you swap the order, your constant would be negative of what it would be normally. So we're just going to make a choice, Tb minus Tm. So could we get rid of the negative sign out front? Sure. We could write this as a regular k. Tm minus Tb. When are you allowed to do algebra? Always. Always. Pretty much whenever you want. And you're allowed to do algebra even if you don't want to. But you can always do algebra before or after calculus. That's, I think I've been saying that for years. All right. So I made k negative and then basically changed the sign on the subtraction. So we can use either one. It doesn't matter which one we use. 
uh, we're going to do apply this to a problem now. So this isn't this this has some thermodynamics, some fancy word describing a law. It's like law of cooling or Newton's twenty seventh law of <laughs> cool stuff. Nobody knows. Of cool stuff. <laughs> All right. You ask me. All right, so whatever the name is, this is not just something I made up. This is actually <laughs> some physics law of something. I just don't know the name of it. There's no mu's up here. Okay, that's an M. It's an M, yeah. Oh, I did a capital and a little M. Too much sense. Let me just make this guy a little. All right, so our example problem. Basements are pretty constant temperature. <laughs> All right, this so room's temperature is 68 degrees. Might as well do a problem with the real body. 68 degrees, and the body temperature is 72. So we're going to assume the body started at 98.6 degrees. How long has it cooled in the room? And this could be whatever type of body doesn't matter. Could be a science body or it could be a human body. I set it up to be a human body or something or somebody with <laughs> human temperature, human standard temperature. <laughs> all right. So this is, by the way, what detectives do not necessarily all the time, but all the time they find a body. I think one of the first things they do is take the temperature and write down what time it is and hope that the room hasn't changed temperature very much. And if you're outside or someplace changing temperature a whole lot, you would need to know pretty much all the temperature. You need to know that change of temperature, and then the problem becomes a way more difficult than the one we're going to solve. So we're going to solve sort of the baby version of that. There's a baby? No, maybe that was a bad choice of words. <laughs> the easy version? <laughs> Well, that could have been just as bad. <laughs> 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 All right, so we have the room. So we got T, uh oh, TM is the medium, t the temperature of the medium. <coughs> so our TM is 68 degrees. 68 degrees are, and that's basically all we know. We know the uh, initial, we have, so we have a 70, we know basically an initial and a final condition are the other two pieces of information we know. So TB, this is a function of T equals temperature, of the body at time time t. So we have two choices on how to set up the time. Do we want to let t equal 0 be the time 
the body started cooling, or do we want t equals zero to be the time that we found the body? In which case, there'll be negative time when we uh, found it. So I think t equals zero will be the initial um, when the body started cooling. So I'm gonna make I'm making a choice, is what I'm saying. Well, you can last sentence kind of chooses it for you. Body at time t. Well, so time is always relative. You sort of pick. Like, why are we in 2017? Because somebody 2017 years ago, or lots of people decided that was year zero. But there wasn't any significance between that and starting it 1,000 years later. Like, why don't we just call this year zero? Start over. What? But these are all just arbitrary choices, is what I'm saying. Like, there's no, this is not, there's no significance to the time and date right now other than what we've arbitrarily given it. So it doesn't matter when I say we're starting time at t equals zero. So the choice I will make is let t equals zero be the um, the beginning of cooling. So our initial conditions. What is T B of zero equal to? Ninety eight point six. That's our initial. Before anything cooled, that was the temperature of the body, the initial temperature. Uh, how do I translate the uh, 72 degrees into Tb of something? So Tb of some time that I don't know, we'll call it T1, is that, or Tf, like final time, or let's go with T1, that'll be the the end time equals 72 degrees. All right, and it's basically our goal to find T1. What time did this body hit 72 degrees? And of course, we're gonna do first by finding TB of T, and then setting equals 72, and then solving for little t. Let's go ahead and figure out how to do this. So I'm going to use that equation, that blue equation there. And I'll rewrite it. DDT TB equals K. TM minus TB. Now, I know the medium is constant, and that is 68. So I can write that number in. I'm not going to bother writing degree symbols everywhere, because I don't want to think that's 68 to the 0 power. So I'm not going to write degrees around. And that is minus TB. And we should have separable. This actually looks really, really easy to solve. Just divide, just separate it out, and so let's go ahead and do that. This should be separable. It's the same exact one as the chemical container one, almost. Almost, um, except the numbers are way nicer.
So this is not our answer, but this is our relation of the temperature to time right here. Why don't we have a plus C? Oh, that's a good question. We should have a plus C. I never even wrote my integral sign. Skipping too many steps. <coughs> plus C, plus C. So let's rewrite this. So I'll write this as a e to the negative k t. So we'll write our e to the c as just a. Is this e to a constant? And now we will subtract t b. So we just put an a in front of the e to the k t. All right, so that was all of our differential equations work. Now we're basically down to just doing some algebra and pre-calculus stuff. So let's apply. Now we have two constants, and we should be able to get rid of them with two initial conditions. And good news is we have two initial conditions. So TB of 0 is 68 minus AE to the 0. So E of 0 is 1. Negative A equals 98.6 minus 68. That's 20, 30.6. Negative. So A is negative 30.6. We can go ahead and put that back in. 68 minus, well, now it's plus 30.6 e to the negative kt. We don't really have another initial condition, unfortunately. So I need to make up another condition. So we really only had... K equals 1? So let's say you hang around and wait for another hour and the body's 70 degrees. So you discover it, it's 72, and you wait another hour and it's 70. So I'm going to add another condition to the problem. <laughs> it's cold in here, I'll be outside. <laughs> So you wait an hour and the body temperature changes 70 degrees. Zero. So let's write. So that is a condition that's related to time one. How do I modify this to use the condition I just wrote down? T of T1 plus an hour equals the new temp. Or that just yep. T2? I could call it T2, but it's one hour after T1. So we'll go. T1 plus 1 equals 70 degrees. So there's our other condition. So now we have, we should be able to figure out what T1 is from this information. So from that being that we were in minutes prior, or I think it was in minutes, right? Should we change that to instead of 1 being 60? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
So let's assume we're in hours. All right, so. She's dead. Well, obviously. Or having major problems regulating temperature. their body temperature. All right, so we'll come back to this problem.